let's start out with just the basics, Simon. Yeah. And that's that, you know, cannabis goes through two growth phases. It goes through a vegetative cycle, goes through a flowering cycle. Sure. And I imagine that the nutrient requirements in each of these two cycles, they're, they're unique, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, they are distinct from each other. There's no question about it. But I think really with deficiencies, yeah. uh, which is, uh, to be honest, even a nightmare topic for you know, commercial farmers like this, it's tricky. We, we need to back it up a little bit and, and think about why are there deficiencies in, in the, your crop? Sure. There's a lot of things that somebody should be considering prior to worrying about what the symptom is that they're looking at. Okay. Um, you know, the first one that I would definitely consider is your watering cycle. Mm -hmm. um, anytime you're going from overly saturated to really dry and back again, you're starting to have problems in the media in terms of what's available and what's not. You can also be starting to hurt some of the plant roots and therefore the plant's not going to absorb it as well. Um, beyond the watering, it's also the pH of that water. And I mean, we can't stress it enough that especially in a water culture system, but right out even to soil, pH is a really important issue. And gardeners need to be well aware of the pH that they're providing for the solution that they're giving to their plant. So what I'm hearing from you, Simon, is that, you know, uh, an over or underwatering situation yep. and or uh, a pH that's out of range yep. uh, could affect the plant's ability to uptake nutrients. So while the nutrients might be there, yep. you don't necessarily have a nutrient deficiency in your in your in your growing media. Yeah. It's it's more a, a, a symptom of something else that's going on. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, look, we're standing in a greenhouse right now underneath the Californian sun. Yeah. And this is a great example of somewhere where somebody could have enough calcium with their plants in the root zone, mm -hmm. but because these plants aren't breathing as much during a hot temperature, you might end up getting a calcium deficiency even though the calcium is actually in the soil at a high enough level. So this is where deficiencies can actually be, um, you know, a little bit confusing. Another issue that can really uh, be confusing is the issue that you see on the leaf mm -hmm. might not be the real issue you're trying to attack. Okay. So you could be getting a deficiency of one element because something with another element isn't working properly. And so for, for gardeners at home, I mean, this issue can be really, uh, you know, like a labyrinth when you're trying to find a solution. Um, and just so everyone knows at home, if they're pulling their hair out over a nutrient deficiency right now, commercial farmers are always taking tissue, um, leachate or solution samples to make sure that number one, elements are present at the right levels, but also too, what is the plant actually taking in through its leaf structure? I mean, that's a really important issue as well. So they're doing a leaf tissue analysis. Correct that lets them know, and I imagine they're testing the soil at the same time. Yeah. So it, that way they can see, you know, if it's in the soil but not making it to the leaf, that it's yeah. not necessarily, you know, deficient. It's there's something else going on. Again, totally. they may be, maybe the pH is off. They were overwatering or underwatering. Yeah. Uh, what are some other conditions that could lead someone to believe that maybe they have a nutrient deficiency when it's really not a lack of a nutrient in the media? Yeah, so I mean, obviously the, the most sensible one is the fact that people aren't supplying the right nutrients to the plant at the right time. You know, starting off with a stock fertilizer from a reputable company mm -hmm. uh, is really going to be the best approach. Um, it is possible to mix your own nutrients, but it's sometimes that's really not the best idea because there's certain ways that elements should be combined together in order to not get a lockout and a concentrate. Um, and that's something that home gardeners won't really be able to assess properly. Okay, so now if someone has, uh, feels confident that they're doing a nice consistent watering regimen, if uh, they're confident that the pH of the water is in an acceptable range. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about, now we're in the vegetative cycle and we are beginning to see some sort of symptoms of a sure. nutrient deficiency. Yeah. What would those symptoms look like? Yeah, I mean, the real one in the vegetative cycle that you're gonna have to be aware of is nitrogen. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're using a media like cocoa, it can actually draw out more nitrogen uh, right away, and therefore you're gonna get a deficiency showing up very quickly. Um, in general, in the vegetative state, though, the nitrogen is really the key one to be looking out for. And what would the symptoms of a nitrogen deficiency yeah. look like? Simon? So nitrogen is what's considered a mobile nutrient. Um, and so just uh, for the audience, I mean, uh, an immobile, generally that element's going to stay somewhere near where the plant positions it initially. But nitrogen, what can happen is it can move around a plant, okay? And so what you're getting here then is you'll see lower leaves starting to yellow off as the nitrogen moves up to the newer growth, which the plant really wants to support. And it's those, it's typically the largest leaves too, those really big fan leaves toward the, toward the lower part Correct. of the plant. Yeah. And then as, as those symptoms progress, as the deficiency really, you know, gets worse, 
it yeah. starts to progress towards the top. Right? Correct. And I mean, if you start getting a completely yellow plant, I mean, you've definitely waited too long. Okay. Um, you know, one thing with gardening, whether it's deficiencies or not, observation is really key. Um, and you should be able to assess that there's a growing nutrient deficiency very quickly, and you need to be on it as fast as possible because any kind of deficiency is a loss of efficiency. And so yes. the plant is actually not going to grow as well. And if in a vegetative state, you're not getting the growth required to build the framework to support your flowers, you're going to end up with a lower yield, no matter how well you know how to flower a plant. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so is the solution just as simple as adding some more nitrogen into your media? Sure. In that case, it definitely can be. Always be cautious when adding things. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do, I mean, you and I are both experimenters. Um, obviously in a commercial facility like this, there's no room for experimentation, but that's why they have agronomists and tissue samples and everything else. What I like to do in my own garden though, is I like to make a couple of different adjustments on different plants. Okay. And that way what you're getting is a visual representation of how impactful your solution was. Sure. So what you might find is, let's say if it's just nitrogen, something as straightforward as that, you could have a double dose nitrogen or a triple dose nitrogen on different plants and then see what the impact is because then the next time you're going to know a little you bit more you've got more experience exactly and you're going to be better at knowing okay i need three times as much nitrogen right now to be successful interesting very cool yeah uh beyond a nitrogen deficiency in the vegetative phase are there any other common deficiencies people should be looking out for? Yeah, I mean, some things sort of go back and forth. I mean, definitely magnesium, which is more of a, a flowering deficiency, is also possible, um, you know, in, in late uh, flower as well. Sure. Uh, and then the micronutrient deficiencies. Look, if anyone's got a micronutrient deficiency at home, again, there could be another underlying issue, but that's where I would really go to the internet. I don't generally recommend that, but the internet, uh, you know, find the reputable people to look for in terms of sourcing, but yes. get some pictures. Because yes. whatever plant you're growing, whether it's avocados, whether it's cannabis, whether it's carrots, somebody's going to have a picture out there that'll say, I had this problem and this is what it looks like. Sure. Um, and so those images are going to be really helpful, at least as a baseline, to give you some idea of what you need to be looking for. Okay. Um, and as far as a magne uh, magnesium deficiency, yeah. is there a, are there common symptoms on cannabis leaves that we could look for? Yeah. So for cannabis, generally what you're going to see is an intervenal yellowing. And when I say intervenal yellowing, you've got sort of slats going into the leaves. Those are considered the veins um, going uh, to the center. Mm -hmm. So you'll get some yellowing between those. Now okay. that can be different um, elements, but the main one is gonna be magnesium. And sure. so what you wanna look for is that yellowing off, like just a dull yellow effect between those veins. And that's when you're pretty sure you've got a magnesium problem. As and that is a very common deficiency for gardeners. And as opposed to the nitrogen, where it's this more, you know, yellow, it's, it's, it's an yeah. even yellowing over the entire leaf surface yeah. and not just within the veins. Exactly. And so it is, a lot of these are visually distinct, but again, don't jump to conclusions because it might be something else. Yes. In general, magnesium is very easily expressed and is a really common deficiency. Because we know cannabis, cannabis is using a lot of it, It right? sure it's is, like... yeah. And probably one of the best ways to adjust that if the formula you're using isn't quite making uh, the, the mark mm -hmm. is to get some Epsom salts, um, okay. some magnesium sulfate. Uh, again, this is very beneficial because number one, it's water soluble. It's immediately available to the plant. It's also got magnesium, but as well, it's got sulfur. And wow. cannabis really enjoys eating sulfur compared to other plants as well. Um, and as we're learning more about this plant, as, as more areas start to grow more of it, um, we're starting to see these little things that you can uh, use as tricks to, to help your garden grow better. Great, man. Great tip, Simon. Thanks. Thank you. So as we started out, Simon, we mentioned, you know, that there's unique requirements in both the veg and the flowering cycle. Yeah. We've covered the veg. Let's dive into the flowering. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, you know, cannabis and a lot of other plants, when they start flowering, they're actually eating a lot more nutrient because, uh, you know, if they're moving from flowers to a fruiting type situation, yeah. they're gonna need a lot to fill up that, that new sort of volume within the plant. Okay. Um, and so deficiencies can actually express more quickly and more severely when you're going into a flowering cycle. So it's definitely a good part to, to start with, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, are we gonna see the same sort of deficiencies as we did in veg? We're gonna see different ones. Yeah, well, so with nitrogen deficiency, a lot of people, uh, especially with cannabis, will actually want a nitrogen deficiency. Um, you know, I'm always a, a bit questionable about when to bring that in. I mean, obviously, a nitrogen is a very important to all plants, even when they're flowering. Yep. Um, but yeah, so you will see a nitrogen deficiency later in the cycle for sure, as well as probably a couple others as you're flushing. But during that main critical period, you're going to see the magnesium again, just like it was in, in the grow. But magnesium for sure in flower is, is, is a bad one. Right. Um, you know, iron is another uh, possibility. And what you'll find is that a lot of... Um, 
There's supplements from different brands of fertilizers that will contain magnesium, iron, and generally calcium and nitrogen in the same bottle. That can be a really good way if you're not sure about your deficiency to try and sort of pick up a little bit of everything. Cover your bases. And exactly, try to cover your bases on whatever it is. Because actually, if you look at um, initial symptoms of iron and magnesium deficiencies, they can be quite similar. And this is where it can get confusing for home growers. So with the magnesium, you mentioned it, this kind of intervenal yellowing yeah. kind of going on. On. And so with iron, is it the same thing? <laughs> it is almost identical. How about that? Um, yeah, and this is why, you know, commercial greenhouses like this, you, their agronomist might be able to say, yeah, well, you know, I, I can see what it is by looking at it, but they're always going to double check with a tissue analysis and a water sample and everything else they can get to give them a full picture. Now those tests, same tests are available to homeowners, mm -hmm. but they could cost anywhere between $85 to $125 a test. Yeah, um, so, so depending, you know, on, you yeah. know, on how aggressive someone is in their, in their cultivating regimen and yeah. how much, you know, they kind of care about their end product. Well, that's the thing. They yeah. could, you could take those measures. They could, they sure. you could send your uh, leaf tissue to a, a lab and, uh, and have that checked out. Yeah, right? I mean, you've got to be a, a pretty serious hobbyist to start doing that. Yeah. But really, it is the best way, and that's exactly how the professionals stay on top of things. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Uh, so beyond the ones you touched on, now what about uh, phosphorus and potassium? I know yeah. those are those. Are well, those are two key elements when you're when you're starting to flower your plant. In general, what you're going to see in our industry is actually an over fertilization of phosphorus, but it is possible to get a deficiency. Okay. And again, I I would really look to. Um, any kind of available images you might have in terms of those deficiencies to really start seeing how they express. The potassium deficiency, again, is, is fairly rare, mm -hmm. um, but again, make sure you're adding in more potassium later in that flowering cycle because anything that's trying to ripen, whether it's a large scale flower like on cannabis sure. or if it's a, a major fruiting plant as well, that potassium is critical to make things go well. Gotcha. What would some of the physical manifestations of these symptoms look like? Yeah, so potassium, you're generally going to get a little bit of necrosis around the edge of the leaf, maybe some slight yellowing. Uh, necrosis being a, a, a browning of the leaf. Yep. Um, and so that's something to look for down the sides uh, or the serrations of the leaf. Along these, um, just the, the edges there, exactly. right? Exactly. That's, where, it, that's edges, where it'll maybe start. This, maybe and then, this tip here. Yeah, but it, it can look a lot worse once it gets bad. And again, that's as, where we're, can, you know, yeah, any gardener, you need to stay on top of deficiencies as much as possible because they can go bad really quickly and this is somewhere where for a home gardener especially your local shop can be an exceptional resource because they've probably seen all the problems you're getting already yeah and I, I mention it often you know the importance of the uh, daily inspection you know through the daily inspection is yeah. where you're going to find any diseases that may be beginning any pest issues any nutrient deficiencies that are just beginning to manifest uh, you know that daily inspection is just it's yeah. so critical whether you're just a home gardener with a few plants, you know, or you're running a commercial operation. Yep. So, uh, yeah. yeah, observation is the key to almost everything related to gardening, so it's a great tip for sure. Yeah. Um, so beyond um, nutrient deficiencies, yeah. you also touched on, you know, some people can do an abundance of yeah. certain sure. nutrients, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you uh, can overdo it real easily, um, especially if you're not paying attention. I mean, these dosages of things can be very uh, finicky. How does somebody know? Um, How does somebody yeah. know if they're putting too much in? Yeah, this is the thing, right? I mean, definitely any kind of meter you can have around your EC or your parts per million as well, your TDS, uh, total dissolved solids, okay. uh, is a great way to start. But what you're going to see on the plant, uh, because every plant is different, especially in cannabis, there's really so many different varieties that can have different problems at different levels of nutrients. Yeah. You're always looking for that initial tip burn. Once you start seeing any kind of curling or browning on the end of the leaves going yellow or brown you're really looking at a plant that's probably having too much uh, salt uh, around its feet and it's actually starting to have a problem with with what you're feeding it um, and at that point you need to be really cautious and again you need to back off water heavily try to get as much of that salt or, or mineralization out of the soil as possible, out of your soilless mix. Yeah. Um, and then you can start applying a half strength nutrient maybe a few days later after you're sure the plant has started to come back. So if, if someone feels that they're, they're, they're seeing they may have over fertilized, yeah. okay, you know, they have this uh, empty bottle of fertilizer perhaps, yeah. and they're seeing yeah. some, some burn on their, on their leaves, that's probably a good indicator. Yeah. And so what they need to do is, is, is flush the plant effectively, For sure. right? And, and, and make that observation, right? Yep. Like you just said, I mean, to me, a gardening journal is a great idea. 
um, because even before you have the problem, you know exactly how much you've been adding and you can say, okay, well, I know that I've added three milliliters of my solution. I'm going to tone it down to two milliliters next time I grow this same plant. Yes. Um, so your tip about observation is exactly accurate and the best way to really be successful with any kind of deficiency problem. Yeah. And again, as far as flushing, just explain the process of flushing. Yeah. So there's a couple of different things you can do. Obviously, straight water is a, a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. You can also use um, products that have different organic acids in them as well to help strip out more of the minerals more quickly. Um, and what you should be doing is actually, if you have the opportunity to have a parts per million tester or an EC meter, mm -hmm. electroconductivity, um, just check that water that's coming out the bottom and see what level is coming out because it should be going down. And once you get to a certain point, you can say, okay, I've released enough of that mineral. Now I'm going to start feeding again. Gotcha. Um, so it really is, again, that observation and then having the right equipment to give you the right detail that you need to make the right assessment. Perfect. This is excellent. Thanks so much, Simon. It's a pleasure. So we, we learned about nutrient deficiencies today. We learned that just because you may see signs of a nutrient deficiency, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have the nutrient in your soil. There could have been other issues, perhaps overwatering, the pH of your water. So uh, you always want to make sure that those things are, are, are right first, that your watering regimen is right first, that your pH levels are correct uh, before you start chasing down a nutrient deficiency. And again, beyond deficiencies, some people put in a little too much uh, nutrients sometimes. Uh, and in that case, uh, you want to flush your plants. So thanks for joining us today, and I'll see you next time.